I recently ranked all of the main quests in the prologue to The Witcher 3, and now it's time to rank the side quests from that same prologue. This is not going to include the scavenger hunts or the treasure hunts. If you want those videos, feel free to hunt for those rankings on this channel. Uh, you won't find them because I didn't make those videos, but that's okay, let's rank the side quests. At number 6, we've got a frying pan spick and span, and this comes last for two reasons. One is it's extremely short, which is intentional, it's a quick comic relief quest to show the player that this game can lighten up at times and be playful, but that also means that it starts, I do it in about a minute or two, it ends, and I forget about it. It's a bit too short and insubstantial. The other reason though is, I can't understand this lady. Asks all polite, Gran, got any birch bark by chance? Lilac berries or even a few coals? Nay, says I. And you must be right daft to pester folk at night with such foolery. So this is pretty well acted and it's not badly written, but they're focusing so much on her quirks and her odd way of talking that it kind of muddles up what she's actually complaining about. And Geralt's investigation inside lays out what happened, but it never feels particularly clear because the quest giver is just here to get some amusing reactions from Geralt. Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? But Geralt being a jerk and an obscure easter egg about Taller aren't enough to pull this quest any higher on this list than number 6. At number 5 we've got On Death's Bed and that's probably a surprise to some because in many ways this quest is kind of a benchmark for what to expect in The Witcher 3. This is where players first learn that your decisions may matter but you also might never know about it. Geralt has to choose whether or not to subject this dying girl Lena to the Swallow Potion to try to save her life with the caveat that she might suffer unimaginably from using a Witcher Potion. If you don't make the potion, she will die unceremoniously and you will never realize there was any depth here. But if you do brew the potion, nothing actually happens immediately and you might finish your playthrough without ever finding out anything else. But if you go to this part of the map, this guy flags you down and he tells you all about what happened to Lena. And he reveals that though she survived, her mind is lost. And we get this exchange to finish things off. I don't know whether to thank you or curse you for not letting her die with dignity. Trust me, choice I had to make was harder. That is pretty impressive that these two basically laid out the ethos of this entire game series in two sentences. And that alone should make this higher. But there's nothing here gameplay wise. The choice revolves around brewing the potion or not, and that gameplay is not specific to this quest. It's sort of what you just do in the open world. And then the interaction with Tamira after that decision isn't all that exciting. Basically, this quest is memorable for the fact that the Nilfgaardian soldier flags you down hours after the quest has already faded from your memory because the rest of it is largely forgettable. So in the end, I settled on this being number 5 on this list. As for number 4, this was easy because once I got the first two quests out of the way and just had these four to pick from, I was like, oh, it's definitely missing an action. And it really comes down to one thing, I hate the choice at the end of this quest. Everything else is pretty good here. The story of friendship between sworn enemies emerging from the horrors of war is touching and heartwarming. The gameplay is strong in tutorializing several gameplay mechanics, and the dialogue is very well written as usual. Even the choice that I mentioned that I hate, the conundrum that leads to it is very meaningful and impactful. What does one do in a situation like this? Do you show compassion to others at the risk of your own family? Or do you say, screw everyone else, I'm going to protect my own? I don't know the answer to this, but one thing I know is I don't let my core beliefs just get swayed by Geralt of Rivia just because he helped me out. The game usually does a good job of making Geralt feel important without having him impact other characters unnaturally. This though is not natural. Dune has very real reservations about helping the Nilf Guardians, which feels like core beliefs that are fundamental to who he is. But all Geralt has to say is let's show him Nordlings are great, and Dune fumbles around a bit before saying this. But that accent. Fine, I'll take him in. Wow, he sounded like a kid who has to pick up his little brother instead of going out with his friends. I don't know, makes no sense for someone to just change their mind based on someone else's opinion like this, so for that reason, Missing in Action is no higher than number four. So on to number three, Excuse we've me. got... Uh, missing in Action's gotta be higher than number four. Yeah? It's just gotta be. But, but my rankings... All right. Okay, so cool. missing in action has to be higher than number four because... 
No, no, Missing in Action is number four. I'm not I'm changing my mind. Who the hell is that guy? No, Missing in Action is number four, on to number three. And this is probably the biggest shocker for me. Twisted Firestarter gets this spot, despite this being the first quest that I did a quest analysis on, and being the moment I fell in love with The Witcher 3. It's a quest that exemplifies that even the most straightforward of choices can lead to completely unforeseen consequences. This dwarf, Willis, had his smith burnt down by an arsonist Nap, and Geralt has to decide what to do with Nap. In so many RPGs, a choice of how to deal with a criminal like this basically amounts to if you want to play as a good or evil character. But in Twisted Firestarter, the choice is way more nuanced. If it was strictly good versus evil, then the good choice of reporting the criminal wouldn't end so tragically. It's brutal what happens in Nap, and things are looking bleak for Willis as well in White Orchard. It's such a fantastic distillation of how powerful The Witcher 3 can be in these tiny stories, and it can't be reduced to simply playing as good or bad. But mechanically, this quest is super basic. It's pretty much the first side quest you come upon, so that's kind of to be expected, but it makes it so that despite my emotional attachment to Twisted Firestarter, I can't twist things to make this quest any higher. At number two, we've got Precious Cargo, and man, this quest almost got number one just for this bit. Watch out, behind you! There's nothing behind me. I'm a witcher, I'd have heard it. Just like I can hear your heart, which is pounding like a liar's. But even beyond the hilarity of this guy pretending there's someone behind Geralt when there clearly isn't, there's so much here! Like the best Witcher 3 quests, the story Geralt is initially told is not quite what occurred, and it's fun discovering the truth. And upon finding the truth, Geralt is given three choices, and while this only really impacts what cutscene plays at the end of the quest, contextually they give you different flavors of Geralt. You've got the rule-abiding, crime-detesting version of Geralt who reports Girner to the Nilf Guardians. you've got the Northern Kingdom loyalist Geralt who lets Girner go with some kudos, and you've got the kinda neutral, but not really, Geralt who just takes the medicine for himself because he thinks Girner's incompetence is gonna get him killed. And each of these versions of Geralt are logical takes on the character, and this is the kinda low-key choice that The Witcher 3 does really well at fleshing out its world, and for that Precious Cargo gets the second spot. And that leaves just one quest, and The Witcher Contract Devil by the Well wins this by a landslide. It's the most substantial of all the side quests here, taking place well away from the town so it truly feels like its own short story. It's also clear that CDPR put in way more resources into this one as there are some really cinematic camera angles during dialogue and cutscenes that aren't present in the smaller side quest. And it's got a tragic tale underpinning everything, with its tendrils spreading out to minor conversations with characters outside of this quest. But most of all, Devil by the Well is a great example of how CDPR makes Geralt feel truly like a witcher. From investigating the scene, piecing together evidence of what bombs and signs will work against the Noon Wraith, which has some awesome creature design, it all comes together brilliantly. And in a rarity for the Witcher 3 base game, I actually quite enjoyed this combat encounter because you really have to use Geralt's tools of the trade to defeat Claire, which is something that the game doesn't prioritize enough after this. Sure, you can maybe fault it for not having any key decisions to make, but sometimes all I want is a straightforward tragic tale. So no matter what this guy says, it's number one on my list. So thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. These ranking videos are a lot quicker for me to make, but don't worry, I am going to be doing Witcher 3 quest analysis videos again in the near future, so stay tuned.